Good morning, guys. It's the Scranton MMA Show with Frank. I'm Jess. And this is Tom. And uh, we're going to start off with another product review. So we were talking about shoes for a while, but I want to just start getting into the product review game because mm -hmm. it's fun and I want people to send me free stuff. Yeah. So um, I got this cup this past week. Uh, it's made by Ella, E-L-L-O, very simple. Um, basically, I like travel mugs because sometimes I'm running late. Got to drink my coffee on the way to work. But I hate that I can't run them through the dishwasher. And I hate hand washing stuff. It's just like such a huge pain in the butt. So instead of plastic or metal, this one's made out of ceramic. So it's like a regular, like a mug you would drink out of at home. It's like the same stuff. And then that green thing around it is a sleeve. It's a silicone sleeve. So it keeps it like nice and warm. Although... I did sacrifice some some warmth for the dishwasher safeness, so it doesn't keep it that warm, um, just because it's ceramic and it doesn't have like a, I don't know, thermal, that, you know, double, yeah. double wall, whatever. Yeah. yeah, but you can't put the double wall stuff in the dishwasher because it like the water gets between the walls and yeah. it just gets ruined, so I like it for that reason. Yeah, because I hate washing awesome. stuff. Like fifteen dollars. And there's like a ton of colors. And the sleeve comes off. It's That's really cool. hard to take off, but you just pull it apart to wash it. Yeah. It's awesome. That's cool. And it's pretty. Bonus. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, pretty coffee drinkers out yeah. there. <laughs> um Okay, so that's my product review. I hope you guys liked it. <laughs> <laughs> good job, good job. Okay, so we're going to get into some questions and comments that we've had throughout the week. So we're going to start with uh, good ukes versus bad ukes. Does everyone know what ukes means? Probably. I don't think so. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> so uke, when you're, when you're drilling, when you're training, when you're practicing, someone's, you know, practicing, doing the technique, and your partner is uke. It's a Japanese term. It comes from judo. Uh, I yell and scream it a lot, so a lot of people now use it. Yeah. But uh, so you have your person practicing and your partner. And the partner, if they're good, helps a lot, can help a lot. If they're bad, can very, very quickly make practice stink yes. and just not as efficient or effective. So we're just going to talk about how to be a good partner, some traits of a bad partner, all that good stuff. So yeah. you want to go first there, Gabby? Yeah. Don't be a noodle, okay? Yeah, just... Jiu-Jitsu is about... <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, that's so common, though. People are yeah, like, I'm yeah. just rubber band man. Yeah. Oh, you have a skeleton. <laughs> you have muscles. Jiu-Jitsu is not about like doing things to people. It's about like taking what they're giving you and responding to it. Right. So if you're a noodle, I don't have any reason to do Jiu-Jitsu against you. Like, you totally just took away my motivation to yeah or well or whatever. There, there has to be a level of resistance with your like body you know what i mean like yeah. if you're so in somebody's guard and you just like lay flat um yeah, yeah. through the head of walk exactly yeah. <laughs> you know um There's no or, threat. especially if the instructor says all right so this person's gonna do step one so then you yes. have to do this yes and you don't do that like um just, yeah, and this turned off or whatever. Yeah, and this kind of goes along with I think last week when we talked about training. Um, yeah, it's really and it's just like how to maximize your training, being conscious and thinking of the moves while you're drilling it is always good. Like think about exactly why you're doing what you're doing. When somebody is do drilling a move on me. Even though I won't do it, I always like to think, all right, wh where are some points I could exploit on this move? Um, so, like, you're still aware. You're not just shutting your brain off for the next, like, yeah. minute while they drill. No, you can learn the move. Like, if you – some move, I don't know what you did. There's mm -hmm. a million of them. But if, like, you did 15 reps on me, I would have it way better than if you're like, hey, here's this move. Describe it. Even demo it. And then me just try to do it. Like, just going through it, like, oh, whatever it is, if it was some crazy sweep or submission, just you doing it on me. I'm like, oh, he's moving this way, he's light, he's turning, whatever. So that's, like, one part. And I think then the other part is, like, I could start thinking, like, oh, he's getting this move because he's, like, moving my yeah. arm out, breaking my posture. So, like, I mean, that's, like, why being a good AK will help yourself. But, like, if we're talking about 
being able to help your partner, you know, vice versa. Just don't be a noodle. And then I think on the flip side, don't just be like a stiff, yeah. stiff board, you know, like Definitely. that's annoying. Like I see a lot of the times in the beginner class, we, people are resisting their partner 100%. And it's like no one's learning. No one's yeah. learning. It's here. a waste. Yeah. It's a complete waste. And yeah. we're not fighting right now. We're practicing. We're supposed to be giving up things so your partner can. Yeah. can have it and work on the move yeah, if you and pull get my it, arm but... my arm moves yeah if you pull my head my head moves yeah. not like look how strong I it's like yeah it's a <laughs> controlled situation and then when you take it live obviously it's like you're going to have a lot more resistance and it's not going to work the same way but it's good to be able to know it in that moment like this is 100 percent how to do it perfectly yeah and your partner has to let you do that I mean, it's one thing if you communicate with your partner, like, oh, I, I'm at this position. Try to move around. See if if I'm yeah. tight with everything, if you can escape anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, but it's another thing, taking that upon yourself to just do yeah. um, <laughs> without letting your partner know. Um, so just communicate with your drilling partner, you know. If you want to have, like, 40% resistance while doing the move, um, then just ask them. Yeah, no. yeah, I think uh, that's like a good way to think of it is like ramping your resistance up. Like the first time I want to like say spin an arm bar yeah. or do a triangle, like it would take any resistance, like say over 10, 20, 30 percent, you're just not going to get it. So like being real cooperative, like blending with, with what your partner's doing, I think that helps. Then down the road, you know, if you're saying like, you know, how do you clear the arm over on a triangle? Like, you know, you could start adding resistance then, because like now I know I have to like pop my hips, shove the arm, cut the angle, like whatever it is. You know, that's when you can start adding resistance. But if you are gung ho from the get go, like it's just not gonna, yeah, it's just not gonna work. Um, so that's that's real big. What else? What other uke problems are out there? Uke problems. So when you're when you're doing this, you know. Yeah, yeah, this kind of. Oh, kind of goes into uke, but kind of just general miss. Make sure like all your training equipment's nice and clean. Yeah. Here we go. Um, Don't be the same wash, guy. Yeah. wash your gi after every use. I get questions about this. There's <laughs> no, you know, me, like it is after every class, wash your gi. Yeah. Don't think you could just hang it up, let it air out. Yeah. yeah, because we're sweating. We're, you know, tracking dirt onto the mat. That's all getting into your gi, and that's just bacteria. And it doesn't only stink, but you could like give someone some kind of like skin infection you because you don't. Yeah, yeah wash no your problem. rash guards. Wash your. Waffle, yeah. yeah, shower after. Just be a, a clean person. Don't. Then, yeah. Especially for people that trained a while, I've had to throw away rash guards yeah. that smell too bad. So if you think yours smells too bad. That's so why I, I like yeah. I like they getting get like funk. the cheaper rash guards, but anytime I see a sale, I, I'll grab some. Mm -hmm. But so here's one that I I saw, and and this used to drive me crazy. We don't get it a lot, but like I think it's kind of a new person thing. They think they're trying to help, but they're not. Uh, at Scranton MMA, we have a lot of good instructors. Oh yes, let them teach. Ooh. White belts. I don't know where it is. I guess with each class with each coach it might be different but generally speaking there's enough instructors on the mat they demo the move they talk the move they're walking around giving pointers they're the ones that should be teaching yeah. so if you're a new gay if you're not high rank or very accomplished i won't say what i think it is for me or my classes you know um be careful with how much teaching you're doing uh at some schools, man, that can get you in trouble. I don't think here we're like beating everybody up for it. Uh, in judo, we'll just call people out, like, "Hey, I think that's we do it with love as best we can." But it's yeah. like, you know, "Hey, you want to teach? Open your own school." That's like the joke I use a lot. But like a lot of times, like if someone even you know maybe a green belt is great at a move, and like we might let them talk a white belt through it. But at the same time, like a brown belt, you know, Vito might be showing something with the brown belt. No disrespect, has no clue. So just practice, get your reps in, and then we'll come around and help you, you yes. know? Yeah, so right. be careful with that. It also sometimes just takes practice time. You know, like we got however much time to practice, I just want to stay moving, stay drilling, yeah. get better. I don't want to listen to anybody but like the instructor. So you got to be careful with that. And if someone 
someone's brand new, like if you're a white belt working with a brand new person, this brand new person knows nothing. And I realize that, you know, white belts might know a little bit more and they want to kind of like push their knowledge and that's fine. But this brand new person is intimidated by all this knowledge that you're throwing at them. So just when we teach, we give like three or four basic points that we want people to focus on. And there might be more details that go into them, but we like keep it simple for a reason. It's because just brand new people, you don't want to throw the, the whole book at them right away. Because your first few reps do not have to be perfect. No, they don't have to be yeah. anywhere near perfect. Mm -hmm. Just do them, be happy about it, and just make improvement. As long yeah. as they get good, you're on the right path. You yeah. don't have to have a perfect arm bar day one. Yep. or anything even close to it so yeah. yeah don't over coach the new white belt who's like already just freaked out that someone's on top of them yeah. that there's people all over the place you know yeah good call yeah. you can show you teach for a reason there's a system <laughs> yeah, cool we're good yeah in case so. for now we'll like come it. back to this yeah definitely. we're watching you there's a lot we've talked about um so i guess this kind of plays into it uh, to avoid injuries. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I feel like there's a lot. I mean, so this could come up again, but we could go through some yeah. some good tips now. Um, the the first thing I'll say, I like the idea that generally speaking, your safety is your problem first and foremost. I'm not saying. Hey, if I'm going with you, it's, it's on. If you get hurt, it's just your fault. You know, if you have that attitude, there's people better that'll show you. So, um, but, you know, a few years ago, I was getting not injured, but hurt a lot. A little something here, a little something there. And I'm like, I'm not, like, I, I can't do this. So I obviously have to increase the, I have to take that on me. I can't say, oh, it's just, say Vito's fault or Eddie's fault or the people throwing me around, like it's me, I have to keep myself safe. So I just started to pay, and it's crazy, like just a little bit more attention, just a fraction more awareness on like, oh, my neck's about to go sideways, or if I don't flip over, my elbow is gonna be stuck behind me. So like um, with me, you know, honestly, it is part ego. Like I don't wanna get thrown in training, I don't, but it's going to happen. People are good. So I just take better falls. I play a little safer and knock on wood. I'm not getting hurt much at all. So yeah. that's just the first thing I want to say is in these two sports, judo and jujitsu, particularly just you wanting to stay safe can keep you so safe. Like I know I don't have like the um, knowledge around like leg locks, ankle locks, any of that stuff. So like if I'm going with Frank and he like, gets a good hold and like I'll tap and he's like no dude you had like 20 seconds before I could do that or other time I'm like tap he's like yeah I, if I just squeezed your whole knee ripped apart so like again good okay he's not gonna rip me apart yeah. but at the same time like when I tap he's like no no not like so he lets me build that awareness but I'm tapping first yeah. you know and then he can tell me like no no you're you're not in complete danger yet but uh so yeah you know and chokes, that's on me. If you want to go out, go out. But like, you know, arm bars, knee bars, throws, like stay safe. If you're not sure how to do that, you just got to practice and be more aware of it. Yeah. That's like the, the first overall thing I want to lay down. Then there's like a thousand others we can get into. But I think for me, the biggest thing to avoid injuries is um, flexibility and mobility. So like make sure um, you're not only flexible, but you're not too flexible where you're you're bending too oh, much. I you think know. those super flexible people get hurt yeah. way more than yeah. my normal. Yeah, don't be sticking your knee behind your head and your yeah. elbow. No, no, stay like in this zone. Yeah. Be good, be mobile. But yeah, don't. If you are that flexible, that doesn't mean you have to show it off when someone's trying to sweep you or armbar you or choke you. Yeah. Just be like a normal human. Yeah, and move it in that yeah. <laughs> in those planes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I see a lot of times in the one on one teaching people I, like you said, your your safety is your own responsibility. I try to tell them to tap really tap often. Yeah, right. Um tap here so you're not getting hurt. Yeah. Could you 
do want to come back the next day and train. If I see people's arms like fully extended, yeah. once it's like to this, like whatever degree this is, like 160, like just tap. There's no way you're gonna bicep curl them back into you. Just tap. You know, like if, if a choke is like really locked on and you're like ready to go out, just tap. Because it's not, we're not counting the number of times you get tapped or tap somebody else. And another thing is, if you get somebody's arm to this extension, just let go. You don't have to force yourself through it because you really can hurt somebody. And I know you're trying to have fun and you're trying to show off, but you really are going to hurt somebody. And it really, it drives me nuts in my one-on-one. -on -one. I see it yeah, all the time. I call people out on that a lot. Yeah. It's I, not cool. And I just like constantly, like, don't hurt other people. Just keep yourself safe. Yeah, I get like a little, I'll, oh, I get a little mad if I have someone's arm like this no, and they're no. not tapping. Like, do yeah. you want me to I'll break scream? It. Like, uh, so I think there is like a uh, a respect there, you know, like yeah. if Frank has my arm all the way straight and I don't tap, I'm making him decide whether to let go in transition or, you know, pop my elbow. Yeah. Like, that's not cool at all. Um, like, I let go of things early and then... The person still is still going. I'm like, okay, I let go for your sake, and you're gonna keep trying to like come at me. Whatever, I'll let it go. But just know, I, I let you out of a really bad position. Uh, someone way smarter than me once said like, you should tap or take the fall once it's closed, because really the lesson is, you know, you letting them even start to open your arm, you letting someone get a deep grip. You know, it's not like I'm going with like a blue belt and they get a good grip yeah. on my neck. I should be realizing that if it was like you two, I'm not conscious. So what's the matter if the blue belt doesn't tap me or the white belt doesn't tap me? Or like if I'm going with somebody and they like get me off balance, they might mess the throw up. But the lesson is like, I can't let someone off balance me. No way. So like once you're off balance, once the attack's decent, like that's where you got to put value in learning, not like ouch 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 yeah you know no like my arms separating from my body like crap i could i i should have my arm broken yeah. you know what i mean so like you got to tap and think like all right they did something to get my arm out that's the important like part was made. yeah like, before not really here like oh i they lost their grip i ripped it out like yeah. don't start thinking that's what's saving you no you know so keep that up in mind like the early when you're giving someone that opportunity to attack, that's the issue. Right. I like it. Yeah. Any other um, injury prevention tips? I mean, I think just to add the one comment is like, roll or train. <laughs> Check that out. <laughs> Do you want to fix it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. My clinical fell over. <laughs> uh, like, so for example, if I'm rolling with Frank in Jiu Jitsu. I can go a little crazy, a little extra hard because I, I roll with Frank a lot. I know when then to shut that down real quick. But like 10 years ago, I, and I probably still rolled with Frank that hard and that crazy, but that was way, way dangerous. So like keep your intensity uh, in line with your experience and your partner's experience. You know, especially yeah. when like arms are getting out there, necks are getting out there. Mm -hmm. You know, there's there's no point in going a thousand percent uh, for for no good reason. Yeah. Like even if it's like when people are on their knees and they're like knee wrestling, yeah. like it's the Olympics. Like yeah. realize like that never really happens. So like you're just putting all that torque, all that strength, all that energy, and you're not even really doing jujitsu yet. Yeah. You know, like get to a position, roll. You know, two of the best guys I know in jiu-jitsu, the Miglewis brothers, they'll roll, and it looks like it's on fast forward because they're just not putting resistance. They're just going, flowing, and, like, it, it's a beautiful thing. You can see how much uh, they just get done in, like, three minutes. Like, they're just going through, like, 12 positions, 10 submissions, and they're just, like, flowing and going and going. Mm -hmm. So if they can do it, I think we can add a little mm -hmm. bit of that in as well. No, don't get hurt. Yeah. Safe. <laughs> what do you think about like strength training for injury prevention? Do you think that has any? Yeah, I mean, I think it goes back to like flexibility. Yeah. Uh, 
I, I mean, if someone's like, I want to strength train, I want to lift, I want to do something off the mat, what's the first thing I should do? I, you know, with a little bit of a general bias, I always say, get stupid strong. Yeah. No one ever in history has gotten into a fight and gone, man, I'm glad I was weaker than that person. Ever, ever. Strength is a huge factor. It's actually probably second to technique when it comes to jiu-jitsu. Like after, you know, the, the, the better technician wins 90 plus percent of the time, unless there's some ridiculous, ridiculous disparity. But once you start getting close, yeah. strength happens, but you can't make that. Like when we're on the mat, we're not strength training. We're yeah. technique training. Mm -hmm. So I, I think it's like the same thing. You might think, oh, Frank's got my arm. Let me just bicep curl him off. And you're, you could get super injured right here. Yeah. Yeah. You know, if you're trying to curl Frank, your bicep can rip, your tendons, your ligaments, your shoulder, yeah. your wrist. Like, so don't rely on strength to finish or escape. Because, again, if you're going to get hurt the same way with, like, flexibility. Like, oh, my arm can just go all the way back here and I can move. You know, so I love strength training. I think it's awesome for competitors, for self-defense. But when you're training, just realize that's not what we're training. Yeah. You know? I think it can help, like, if you, like, encapsulate your joints with, like, more muscle. Do you think that? Yeah, I think like, it helps. Because sometimes there are, there are times, like, someone throws on, like, a Del Viva guard and it kind of, like, starts your knee in or, you know, something like that. Like, do you think just having, like, general overall strength is going to help when it comes yeah, to... Yeah, I like the idea that at least when someone's on top of me, I can, like frame up a little bit or hold them up or like if someone is spinning an arm bar i can maybe slow them down a little bit and a lot of different ways like that like if someone's on my neck i can like undo some of the twisting yeah but uh you know it's not the, the end all be all no it's definitely not going to just keep you safe yeah. i mean yeah. it, you think of how many people you choked out that are way stronger than you yeah. it's like ridiculous mm -hmm. so but i do think uh you know, like we're doing a, a sport. If you just want to keep it simple, it's a sport. In sports, you know, your technique will help keep you safe. If you don't know how to, like, do these spinning, turning movements, you're more likely to get hurt. The better technique you have, the less likely you are to get hurt. Like Frank was saying, the more flexible you are in certain areas, that's going to help. You know, uh, I think Frank likes doing some of those, like, I don't know what you call them, banana splits or whatever you, you when you split me open sometimes, right. like those work on me and like, you know, I don't get hurt, but sometimes I have to give it up a lot sooner because like, this is my flexibility <laughs> right here. Um, so like the more flexible you are, that's going to help. And the more strength you have, it's going to help. Just don't make that like a, oh, I'm safe because I'm strong. Yeah. yeah. Um, you, know, you have to be smart and have or take falls, whatever it is, to stay safe. Yeah. Definitely. What do we think about time? I'm probably going to have to start teaching soon, so. Yeah? Yep. Okay. Do you want to talk about one more thing? Something? Throw one more thing out there. Go for it, Sensei. Okay, so we're going to talk about guillotine. Um, last week uh, in the 101. Okay. We did guillotine stuff, so. Frank, give us a little insight into, you know, what we. Um, so we went over not only how to throw the guillotine, but more importantly, how to defend against the guillotine. I think um, when we were talking about this earlier before we recorded how you'll see guillotines thrown in street fights a lot more now that MMA is a lot more popular. Um, so we feel like it's very important to know. Um, and to know the proper defense. Yeah, that. yeah. Because someone could just like slam that on and not realize like how to finish it properly mm -hmm. and just like be squeezing and twisting your neck. But as long as you know, like pull down on their wrist, reach over their shoulder and kind of get off to the side, you're already safe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you could just take them down to the ground, get on top, and you can like finish your own choke by like driving your own shoulder into their neck. It's just, I love that. I love like, did you ever see the <laughs> video of, um, uh, Valerie Worthington does it to Ryan Hall. She's like teaching okay. a class, and Ryan just goes out. Yeah. Oh, it's like a classic <laughs> jujitsu video. It's awesome. I love it. Maybe we'll we'll put the link to it. Thank you. I'll be down below. We should put it in the comments though. That's a good one. Yeah. All right. Yeah.
yeah, if you're if you don't quite get what Frank just said, like go on like World Star or go on YouTube and look up some street fights, and you're gonna see bad jujitsu in street fights. Yeah. You know, it's rare you're gonna see like purple belt jujitsu. It's just you know, a lot of purple belts are not out there on the streets rolling around fighting. Yeah. But a lot of tough guys watch videos and then like, oh, I can do this neck crank, neck breaker, whatever they think it is. Yeah. So yeah. if you know the, the basics to defend it, I think it actually takes their bad jujitsu and makes it a big advantage for you. Oh, I'd much rather someone yeah. I'd much rather some dumb dumb try to grab my neck than throw punches at me. Yeah. Like, oh please just grab me and we can end this from real life. Yeah, right? yeah. You know, then like the That's big where I want to be. Yeah, exactly. Thanks for doing the work for me. And this will be over soon. Yeah. So yeah, if you haven't like watched some goofy street fights and you do jujitsu, I, I think it's definitely useful to like spend a couple minutes on YouTube, watch like goofy street fights, and you're like, wow, it'll make you feel good about your own jujitsu. Yeah. You know, um, and it'll give you an insight of like, well, is that you're shaking? I am shaking. <laughs> My caffeine's kicking in. Um, yeah, so it'll like give you an idea of why. People will say that, like, why do we need to know? Armbar defense for self defense. Because freaking Greasy's made everyone in America watch UFC and now people just throwing arm bars and chokes. So mm -hmm. you definitely need to know how to defend it purely for self defense, let alone like the sport aspect. So, yeah, learn your guillotine defense, learn all the basic attacks so you can use that to your advantage. Yeah. I like it. Cool. Yeah. yeah. So we didn't hit a lot of the stuff we wanted to because we kind of went off on some tangents, but I like it. Definitely. I like what we talked about. Yeah, keep sending in questions, ideas, topics, whatever you got. Let us know who you want to see as a special guest because I keep trying to get people on to talk with us because I feel like we have some really good judo and jiu-jitsu conversations, but when it comes to striking, like none of us are really so in embedded the comments, in the game. In the comments, tag Steve Wilson. Steve Please, Wilson. that's pretty much all I'm trying to Everybody just tags these. Let's do the next one at his house. So yeah. Nice. yeah. <laughs> He'll bring all this fancy gear with us. <laughs> Good morning, Steve. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cool, cool. Yeah. It's really, it's not that hard to make a video. What was that one they made? Um, go to people's houses with the big check and the cameras. Publish it. <laughs> we'll do that, but just yeah. with our little self yeah. here. Yeah. Just the laptop. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Talk to us about pumpkin. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Okay. Cool. All right. Thanks, everyone. Appreciate you watching it. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks. Right. See you. Bye.